So I've been coding a bunch this week, trying to get the MVP of this MVP template out. And what that is, is really just a boilerplate for MVPs that anybody can use. Uh, I plan to op open source it because I don't really see a need to pay all this kind of information. You know, I see MVP agencies or people trying to sell these MVP templates. And I, I personally just didn't want to get into that business, but also I wanted to use it personally it's really a product for myself and I plan to use it for my next project immediately after this. So today I'm just gonna be focusing, you know, I'm gonna go to a cafe, I'm gonna try to polish it up a little bit, ideally add some documentation because if you ask any developer, they love writing documentation and hopefully get a working version out for people to contribute. I'll talk, before I go, I'll talk a little bit about what is in this project and kind of run through it so that it's easier for people to contribute if they watch this video. So for the front end, I've been using TypeScript React. It's what I've used in the past, and it seems to be the kind of de facto standard for front end development. It's type safety is really nice. Uh, you, you know, when you're programming, you know exactly what types things are. And so it makes it just so much easier to debug. And I'm, I'm no means a front end expert here. So I, I definitely rely heavily on GitHub Copilot and other online page examples to help me out a lot. And if I ever hired someone, the front end slash product design engineer would definitely be my first hire. I also use Vite. So Vite is just the front end framework. It makes it really easy to use and I have no complaints yet. I know a lot of other founders use Next.js, so maybe I'll experiment with that in the future or honestly just create another template for it. For my CSS, I've been using Tailwind. So they make it super easy to just put your CSS inside of your components. And so far, again, I'm not really an expert in this. It's just, I looked online for good CSS tools and this popped up and it's been super easy to use so far. I've also been using Shad CN, and so that's a component library for the front end and it gives you a bunch of components ready to go right off the bat, so you don't really have to implement it yourself. So make like sidebar, or sidebars, skeletons, you know, labels, buttons, cards, collapsible menus, drop down menus, gives you a whole bunch of stuff. And so you can focus on just building the actual pages themselves, right? I'm using a bunch of Shad CN um, components here. Now for the back end, I actually come from a pretty heavy C -sharp .NET background. And so, what I've solely worked on in my past two jobs is just backend C -sharp .net. However, I used Python for this project because one, I'm actually pretty familiar with it because I interview in Python and a lot, and my co-founders actually work primarily in Python as well, since they're all AI ML engineers. And so that's what we went with. We chose fast API because really it's super easy to use, right? You register your routes in a file and then you go into maybe your controller logic where you just add this tag uh, to indicate what route that you want this logic to be exposed at so my user creation flow for example when i'm creating users i just created a route users create labeled it here and then had backend logic to actually create a user there's also a lot of integration for ai tools and clients for ai tooling so uh, especially for Python, just because that's kind of what a lot of AI engineers use. So when I'm, you know, for example, OpenAI, I mean, OpenAI has clients for a lot of different languages, but super easy to implement, right? This is pretty much like all of the code for calling open AI, like ChatGPT and even sh the streaming API endpoint, super easy to use. And so highly recommend Python if you're already familiar with it. For our database, we're using Supabase and it's my opinion that you want to manage your services out as much as possible in your MVP development. And so Supabase is pretty easy. You have these migration scripts. If you wanted to just create tables, you can you know, create tables like so. They come with built-in user authentication, which is really nice. And so when I call create users or when I try to create users, I'm actually just calling the Supabase client that's in Python to create 
users. And that's just hitting my local Docker container. They have a bunch of good documentation on how to develop in Superbase and just hitting the prod endpoint is just as easy. So again, highly recommend something like that. You know, there's alternatives like Firebase or maybe some cloud managed service. So don't try to stand up your own database like the, uh, from scratch. And just uh, for my IDE, you know, I've tried Cursor, I've tried V0. They have their pros and cons. Sometimes they hang for me a little bit too much and I'm just comfortable with VS Code as well, right? You can have multiple consoles. I have my uh, GitHub Copilot window here so that, and I can give it con full context just by typing in workspace. That gives it context to all of my files that I'm currently working with. And so you can say, hey, I am working in this file. Can you implement this route using logic from other files? And it does, you know, sees all of that super nice super easy. It's got a free trial and I think it only costs $10 a month. So it's also really cheap compared to to chat GPT. So I'll stick to that for now. If I find some other product or if some revolutionary uh, development happens, uh, then I'll try it out. I'm, I'm always open to trying things out uh, just to see if it helps my workflow. So that's pretty much the bare bones MVP. I'm definitely going to be adding a ton of other stuff to it. Like Stripe integration, email integration, right? Being able to send emails to your users and even just hosting instructions. For example, maybe I want to host on Vercel or Netlify or a digital ocean, just making it that as easy as possible, right? Giving you step-by-step -step instructions on how you, how you want to launch your service. I understand that, you know, everybody's MVP will be a little bit different. And so really just if I was able to abstract that part away too and create some sort of uh, template for creating a separate logic for your MVP, that'd be awesome, but that's probably another service in itself. So here's the MVP boilerplate in a nutshell. If you want to contribute, that's great. Uh, if you just want to use the code, I'll link it in the description. <laughs>
Really a lot to understand about what makes a thumbnail and title appealing to your specific niche and what's relevant to the topics that the audience in your niche is searching for. And as I refine my process for making YouTube videos and learn about it from others, my product will only get better. So I created a new landing page for this idea in order to gauge interest for the product, which would cut down on the researching part of the process for creating videos. And if you are a YouTuber who is interested in beta testing this product, feel free to email me or sign up for the waitlist or just to get in contact. Uh, I would always love to learn from others. And of course, I'm gonna to try to use the MVP template for this and as a result, improve that template. I'll try to release this as soon as possible to get this in the hands of beta testers. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching and until next time.